so today uh, we'll talk about um, the um, IoT in the agriculture and um, what uh, Zesaya, which is my company, is doing in that space. Give you a little bit of background about myself and, uh, and Zesaya, uh, and then I'll explain the challenges in the ag. They're uh, specific um, from the point of view of the, uh, of the IoT. Um, the, uh, I'll show a few precision act uh, use cases um, and then uh, I'll um, discuss uh, the wireless technologies that are applicable to the uh, to the uh, IOT uh, to the uh, precision agriculture and uh, and then I'll show you the Zensaya solutions uh, for the agriculture and then if there are any questions so we can have a discussion. So uh, about myself, uh, I'm Roman Stashevsky. I uh, immigrated from uh, Poland when I was 18, and uh, I had enough money for the airfare ticket and, uh, and the 20 bucks in the uh, in the pocket. Um, so I started working uh, in the electronics shops repairing VCRs. If you remember those. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know when i started uh, they were like uh, you know two thousand three thousand dollar pieces right uh, so it was really worth to fix them but um when i uh, finished uh you know they were like uh, eighty dollars so <laughs> uh, you know, the, the writing was on the wall <laughs> that i needed to do something but uh, while I was, um, you know, I gained some experience uh, repairing things, I uh, started my own electronics repair shop, and uh, uh, it was called uh, Videotech. And uh, actually, that was, um, you know, uh, letting me um, have a flexibility to continue studying, uh, pursuing my bachelor's degree, and, uh, and support myself. So I finished um, uh, uh, bachelor's uh, at UTD, basically, um, you know, that that free and uh, you know so th that was a pretty good experience and gave me some uh, uh, taste of uh, entrepreneurship um, and uh, so I, uh, I graduated uh, with a BS and MS in double E from uh, UTD and uh, then I started working at Texas Instruments uh, first as a IC chip design uh, designer and uh, then manager and then I worked as an uh, IC uh, as an IC system architect. Uh, uh, so Brian is uh, from that uh, part of my life, <laughs> and uh, I worked on um, uh, many different types of technologies and products. Uh, so, uh, like uh, for example, the wireless um, radios for Bluetooth and cellular. So uh, we're the startup within TI that uh, developed um, uh, really uh, revolutionary technology that um, allowed to combine the RF and uh, digital on a single chip. So um, basically that's allowed to make the uh, cell phones and the uh, uh, Bluetooth headsets uh, very cheap and uh, plentiful and uh, basically uh, provide those uh, to uh, to the third world countries, you know, at a very low cost. Um, uh, I worked on the processors for smartphones and uh, tablets and specifically accelerators for computer vision, uh, augmented reality, natural user interfaces, and imaging. And, um, and, uh, uh, and then I worked in the automotive group uh, on the driver's assistance technology that was utilizing the cameras and the various sensors. Um, so uh, basically uh, doing the sensor integration uh, and uh, processing the uh, multiple streams of data in efficient ways. Uh, I was a, a distinguished member of technical staff at uh, TI, um, and uh, and then uh, when I uh, I wanted always to start my own business, um, you know, uh, aside from that first uh, repair shop, so uh, I um, uh, I decided to uh, start a company that was focused on IoT because uh, I had a lot of background working with sensors and processors and wireless technologies at TI. So that was kind of a very natural thing for me because uh, I, I knew the, uh, the technology from inside out and uh, then I could build on, uh, on top of that. Um, so uh, I've been uh, basically uh, an, uh, an IoT hardware entrepreneur for the last 10 years. 
So uh, Zensayo is, um, uh, I founded it in 2014, so uh, 10 years ago. Um, and uh, uh, the, from the beginning, uh, it was, uh, uh, I, I had an idea to be basically a system integrator, to take all these different pieces and put together the larger systems and utilize my uh, expertise in the, in the hardware. But uh, as I started looking for the, the hardware, the, I could not really find anything that was uh, fitting. You know, there were like a proprietary systems for verticals or very expensive uh, modems. And uh, they were like, a, you know, uh, mains powered, so you could not use them in the field. Uh, and uh, basically it was just, uh, you know, I, I thought, okay, uh, so uh, I need to pivot and uh, I need to create, uh, start creating the hardware that, uh, uh, could be used for these kind of applications. Um, and IoT at that time was uh, really new. You know, it was like M2M, you know, before, and uh, it was uh, quite different from IoT. There was, uh, you know, uh, not as much of the cloud uh, emphasis. Uh, it was more like point-to-point -point communication. Um, so, um, so there was, um, you know, and um, since it was a very new area, I wanted to, um, Basically, I knew that it was very difficult uh, for uh, the uh, businesses that were low tech that were basically ideal targets for IoT to uh, use that technology uh, and uh, put it together to in a system uh, to and uh, you know and basically even uh, they did not know the, what the requirements should be so um, you know less uh, along finding the right hardware and so on so basically I um, developed like the uh, Flexi Sense hardware platform. So this was a, a hardware platform based on modules, and I'll talk more about this. But uh, it allowed uh, basically quick prototyping of the use cases uh, in the uh, real settings, real life settings. Um, so um, you know, in the field. Um, and then um, you know, I basically uh, found, uh, found that uh, I was um, the customer for my own product because the customers wanted the and uh, kind of uh, like. Uh, proof of concept um, product, but uh, they did not know really how to use, uh, you know, that technology. So, um, so they were asking me to build it for them, and um, and I was doing that. So I basically thought, okay, why not make the products uh, that uh, are the most common for what I'm being asked for most common. So I basically pivoted and uh, started doing like uh, the products based on my hardware platform and uh, productizing them. <clears throat> so, uh, the, so basically, there were like uh, LoRa-based products, and uh, LoRa actually came out, um, you know, a couple of years earlier. So uh, I was very early adopter uh, for that. <laughs> and uh, the first products were LoRa-based, uh, and uh, I saw a lot of traction from um, from agri <laughs> agriculture applications. Um, and uh, LoRa seemed like a was perfect choice for these kind of applications. Um, so then I basically had uh, like a first version and some, um, you know, uh, some product variants and then uh, the next version of that Laura. And then uh, the customers were asking me for the cellular version because um, Laura did not always make sense, you know, in all cases. So uh, they wanted uh, to have an option to use uh, cellular products and uh, not search for something that was different, you know, and then they had to like uh, train uh, people on using that. So, they wanted basically the same thing, but with the cellular modem. So, quick question: What technology are you using for the asset tracker? Is it RFID or, or something? Else? Uh, no, th this was a GPS based. Um, so, um, so basically, I created that uh, that product, and um, and uh, that's a very hard. Um, product to make because uh, the, uh, this was based on LTM uh, technology, which just uh, came out like a couple of years earlier, but uh, it's um, uh, uh, it's a paid spectrum. So, um, you know, you, uh, there's a lot of qualifications and things like that. And uh, the cell towers had to be upgraded. So there was a lot of issues uh, with the network, with the modems. And, uh, you know, so uh, this was uh, taking uh, a lot more time than, mm -hmm. uh, than Laura. But, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, I released the product in 2020 and, um, you know, and then since then it was uh, refinements and so on. And uh, actually, the, you know, the uh, revenue and profits uh, started growing exponentially once I started so creating the uh, off-the-shelf products. So it's a 
for you know customers low um, uh, low tech uh, businesses to take and uh, install and uh, basically get the benefit uh, of uh, IoT. So uh, this is uh, this is the FlexiSense uh, hardware platform. So it's uh, basically modular platform. And uh, are you familiar with Arduino? Okay, so it's kind of like Arduino, but uh, you know Arduino is great. Uh, but uh, the problem with uh, Arduino was that uh, it only had really one socket. And then if you needed like uh, you know different functions uh, that were outside of uh, that um, main board, then you had basically you had a very limited. Um, ways to build a prototyping system. So it's great for like lab environments and uh, you know offices and uh, stuff like that, but not really something that you can deploy in the field. And uh, it was also not low power and uh, had a lot of memory limitations and things like that. Uh, so um, so basically uh, I upgrade, uh, I improved on that uh, by uh, using a more powerful processor and um, and then uh, having like a four slots uh, that um, for four modules that uh, you could um, uh, plug in and uh, you could uh, mix and match from uh, a selection of different modules, like uh, for different types of radios, uh, different types of sensor interfaces, uh, different type of power management schemes. And, um, and then you basically plug those in, you write a little bit of code and uh, put it in the uh, outdoor enclosure, and then you could deploy that in the in the field and uh, do the, your proof of concept uh, uh, validation. And uh, and then uh, if you decided, okay, uh, you went through some iterations and decided that uh, it was a uh, you know uh, acceptable product, then uh, I could go to production very quickly you know, by just um, making everything on a single board and uh, removing the things that are not needed, and uh, you know basically cost optimizing. So, um, so that's uh, really what happened. Um, you know, uh, the customers were like um, asking. You know, I was showing this to the customers, and they were like, "Oh, great! You know, uh, why don't you build us a product that does this, this, and that?" And I was okay. I'll do that. So it was part of that um, system integration consulting. Uh, but um, uh, so uh, some products were like uh, the EHIF monitors. Uh, for, uh, for a company, for a startup that was uh, basically renting the, the bees, uh, beehives uh, for the pollination purposes, and uh, they wanted to monitor the health of the beehive. So uh, it's actually very interesting. I learned a lot of different things because, uh, you know, like a beehive is like an organism by itself, and uh, it, it keeps the constant temperature and the humidity and so on. So uh, it's uh, uh, it's basically you can mo monitor the temperature, humidity, and you can uh, uh, basically determine if the, the bees are healthy or not. Um, and um, and then uh, there were like a number of um, small form factor products uh, like a, a GPS asset tracker, the <laughs> single channel uh, sensor, um, uh, telemetry, the fill level monitors with ultrasonic, and so on. Um, you know, and then uh, I also developed a larger product that was more capable than these, and uh, it could um, support more types of sensors and things like that. So, um, you know, so basically uh, these were like a, a lot of times of custom engagements, uh, and uh, this uh, was uh, also custom engagement, but um, the customer said, uh, I don't really care, you know, I'm going to give you the requirements, so learn from that, and uh, you know, build a product and sell it so we can uh, basically get the benefit of lower cost uh, if you sell it more. So, so then uh, basically uh, this line took over and uh, this uh, became, became the Telefarm uh, line uh, with the LoRa and the uh, LTM um, versions. And uh, this was, um, the small form factor was not really that important for most customers. Uh, so basically they switched to this product. And, uh, you know, and uh, that's my main product line um, right now. Uh, there's a question. So for uh, ag applications, did, <clears throat> did your client have to stand up like a low rock uh, antenna to reach the, uh, you know, beehives and stuff like that? Yeah, so they basically, they, they were like installing the gateway okay. uh, yeah. in the I mean, area. They, were, they weren't relying <laughs> on any of no, yeah, they, they wanted very low cost. Yeah, yeah they, they wanted as low cost because uh, 
you know, these beehives are not very expensive. Um, so uh, basically, the, the product had to be pretty cheap. Uh, and uh, it was supposed to be a lot of uh, units. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, for all the LoRa products, you need to have a gateway, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Zensayo's uh, focus area is um, really the stuff between uh, the sensor, connecting the sensors to the cloud applications. And, um, and basically uh, all the integration and uh, all the mass and the difficulties uh, is hidden in there and made it really easy for us. Uh, for the customers uh, to use the product. Uh, so basically the products are shipped to them pre-provisioned and uh, uh, if they uh, get a LoRa, then uh, they also get the gateway and uh, they just uh, plug in everything and it works out of the box. Um, and uh, a lot of times uh, they have uh, their own uh, custom applications for how to analyze the data. They're the experts uh, in, the, in those fields, uh, but uh, they have no idea how to do that. So, so that's the value that I'm adding. And at the same time, the sensor manufacturers, they know how to build the great sensors, but they don't know how to connect them to the clouds. So, so uh, now let's uh, shift gears uh, to the, uh, to go through some, uh, uh, what I um, perceived as challenges in agriculture. Uh, and uh, when I say, Challenges. Um, we should always think that uh, you know these are opportunities in disguise. Uh, you know, if you can address these uh, challenges in a, a good way, then uh, it becomes your competitive advantage. Um, so, um, so basically, uh, I'll go over these um, in a little bit more detail. Okay, so uh, the first one is uh, for, for market uh, fragmentation, and uh, it's uh, it's a big deal, you know. So there, uh, that's the reason why the big companies don't really uh, want to go into the agriculture, you know, unless it's like a big sector or something, because uh, it's really difficult, you know. It's you know, they have to deal with many different customers of different sizes. Uh, there are so many different um, subsectors, and they, within each subsector, there are so many, you know, uh, different uh, areas um, and the requirements. Um, so, um, uh, you know, the supply chain complexities are just uh, mind-boggling. You know, um, I, I entered into like uh, different types of relationships uh, over the years. There were, you know, uh, there might be a company that uh, has a competing products to mine, and uh, you know we resell each other's products. So it's uh, it's uh, that crazy. Uh, and um, uh, uh, yeah, so so basically, you just uh, have to focus on the niches uh, the, where you can add value, and uh, you know either horizontal, very narrow horizontal, you know, or uh, vertical, you know, and uh, and then even then, it's kind of like uh, limited. Uh, you know, uh, reach for the products. Uh, so you really need to know where you want to add value and where you're good at. There's a question. Yeah, so, uh, so what are your, your sales channels, like your selling channels for this? Um, you know, like, I, I think, you know, some of these uh, rural areas, they have like tractor supply and, you know, farm equipment and stuff. And so how do you get the word out to people for your product? It's uh, basically if you build a great product, it's going to be, um, you know, most of the sales are going to be through word of mouth uh, because it's, uh, it's typical, you know, the products uh, out there, and I'll talk more about why it is, but uh, the products there uh, that were out there, they were not very good, you know, and it's really tough to make a good product. Uh, so if you have a good product, you know, great product, um, it sells itself uh, very easily. And uh, you know the sales channels are very complicated. It's there's no like one cookie cutter approach because of these um, you know because of the fragmentation. Um, so uh, yeah, so you uh, have to basically explore the ecosystems. You have to understand them. You know uh, what relates to what, who does what, and uh, you know and uh, basically. Try to partner, cooperate, and uh, collaborate. Um, you know, any way you can. Uh, so that's uh, really the 
the main thing for about agriculture it's the ecosystem you know being able to play the within the ecosystem and uh you know play well and uh, be supportive of each other um and uh you need to understand the uh, needs and requirements uh, for the product so if you have like a certain products in mind then um uh, you need to, you know, uh, understand uh, how you can uh, kind of broaden the scope of that product so it uh, can apply to different, um, you know, segments or different use cases without uh, too much of, um, you know, uh, burden on the product. So that's uh, that's really key. Um, and uh, yeah, so you basically build a versatile product. Uh, another one is uh, the natural resource constraints uh, in agriculture and, uh, you know, so like a, uh, water scarcity, soil degradation, climate change, biodiversity loss, pests and diseases, and so on, you know, fertilizer uh, cost, uh, government res restrictions. So that's uh, really more of the issues that uh, the, uh, the players in the act, uh, you know, the farmers, the growers, uh, uh, are dealing with, uh, and that's where I, uh, IoT is really perfectly positioned to help. You know? So, uh, so you just want to really think how your product can uh, alleviate, your, uh, you know, those issues, and uh, how can you, you know, um, uh, help monitor the uh, resource usage, uh, how you can prevent waste, uh, you know, how you can uh, uh, provide the data about. Uh, Conditions, soil conditions, and so on. So uh, that's uh, basically you. You have to think really how your product uh, can, uh, you know, apply to the uh, to the agriculture. So, Roland, you address all those? No. <laughs> no, it's uh, the ecosystem. Uh, so the reason I ask is that uh, I know the Midwest. There are the, the, the states are looking to do some of this stuff. You know, having private wireless 5g network etc and, and try to have, have this kind of environment happen so that's why i'm asking that if, if you're, how much are you involved in this particular product i'm uh, pretty much involved in um, all of these uh, it's just um you know I, I i don't provide the complete solution uh, to to those uh, issues right uh, i'm providing the technology that helps to solve them Solve, solve those in different in those issues. So if somebody wants to get a soil sensor, a what sensor? If somebody wants to get a soil sensor and deploy a bunch of soil sensors, do you get involved with the product decision with the type of sensor and the, the vendor for that sensor? Uh, sometimes, uh, a lot of times, uh, they might be using certain specific, specific sensors and uh, they just need the sensors connected to the cloud. Um, you know, so it's uh, there's uh, all. I mean, there there's so much variation yeah. within yeah. the market. Is anybody doing this completely? Yeah. Only very narrow vertical you know, spaces. Uh, the, it's just impossible. I mean, it's um, it's too big. Uh, so somebody will do moisture sensing. They'll do the sensors and the connection to the cloud and the cloud, right? For example. Right. But they're not doing uh, all these other. Potential. Yeah, there are companies that uh, do like, um, you know, application software, how to analyze the data and uh, how to make the decisions based on, uh, you know, the data that you get, but uh, they don't have a competency in uh, hardware, for example, or in the wireless or, or sensors, you know. So it's, uh, you know, IoT is uh, basically, it's not a single technology. It's actually a mixture of a lot of technologies uh, in the single, you know, for uh, uh, it's an intersection of those technologies uh, for the specific use cases. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's uh, no really company that can address um, everything, you know, for everybody. So who else competes with you? Uh, there, there are competitors, but like I said, sometimes uh, competitors can be partners, you know, and uh, it's just a very, uh, you know, very rich uh, ecosystem. So if there is a system integrator out there who would like to put all this together, and they could talk to you to put some photos together. Right. So uh, basically, you you need really a system integrator right. that uh, pulls these things together. And uh, and I'm not the system integrator. I know for one that's what I'm asking. I'm sorry? I know one that's what I'm asking who's working on some of this stuff. Right. So, um, you know, so basically that uh, person would uh, try to identify the pieces, uh, you know, of the puzzle and 
put that together. I was going to ask about that because it seems like a natural opportunity for system integration. So there are ag, smart ag um, integrating com integration companies that are just focused on that. Then. Yeah. yeah. Is there a common language that's being used between the different sensors or? or at all? Uh, yeah. uh, there, there are some industrial interfaces uh, that are kind of common, uh, but uh, yeah, so, uh, the, you know, like a 420 milliamps and a voltage interface, and, uh, RS-485, you know, so your typical suspects. In the monitoring of the latency an issue? No. Yeah. It's no stuff. What are some of the software that you, uh, what operating system do you use with the energy system? Use? What other software do you use? Oh, there, there are so many layers of software here. So, uh, I mean, every every area uh, here, you know, there, so there's software in the sensors, uh, there is, uh, you know, software in the, uh, in the hardware, there is a software on the cloud that uh, basically uh, gets the data, analyzes that, uh, parses, uh, you know, and, uh, and then uh, uh, formats that in the right formats. Uh, you know, there is software that, um, is it mostly the diagnostics and so on? What's the Linux? It's uh, so uh, it depends where you know, like okay. uh, here, uh, you know, like uh, here on the hardware side, it's okay. mostly C, C plus plus, running on micro. Uh, it's uh, actually not even an operating system, just uh, okay. bare bones, you know. Okay. So do these systems also have over the air update capabilities, like secure over the air update. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the uh, cellular. Version has a uh, firmware over the oh, okay. update to the. Now, is your product specifically hardware, or do you have a software component that goes with it? It just doesn't encompass all of it. It encompasses all of that. So, like uh, here, basically, there is a hardware, uh, you know, the firmware, uh, and then the cloud software. You know? So, um, so basically, it's uh, uh, it's uh, basically taking all these uh, different. Uh, Things that are difficult to make work together, and uh, uh, and packages that, and uh, provides as a ready to use, easy to use product. Roman, you make your own boards. Do you think? Yeah. Right? Okay. yeah. Sorry, I don't. So I don't know, like the data analysis part. Do you provide the to no. the or get, in, get ingested to anything? No, it's uh, uh, our partners are basically providing those pieces, and uh, we work with. Uh, Multiple partners, so object spectrum is one of them. Is this kind of uh, brute force data collection, or do you put some intelligence in there? So you can actually, like with over there updates, you can put intelligence in there, machine learning models, um, all kinds of algorithms. Do you support that, or is this more of a brute force data collection? Uh, right now, it's um, more of the straightforward data collection, but uh, you know that's where the the technology is going is to yeah. put more smarts uh, at the edge, exactly. you know, especially yeah. with the cameras and camera sensors. So you can lower the cost, the implementation costs substantially, right? The yeah, costs. yeah, and the, the biggest uh, problem is really the wireless communication. So the more you can do low power on the device, uh, you know, the uh, the better your solution is because uh, you're not sending a, uh, a lot of data uh, over, you know, 20, exactly. 30 miles, right? How important is end-to-end -end data security for exact ag applications? Uh, it's uh, it's important in a way that uh, you know you don't want uh, somebody to hack into the system, uh, but uh, the customers don't really care that much that uh, the data could be visible to somebody else. You know, yeah. the, 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 the reason I ask is because I'm sure you are aware of the Microsoft's Azure Sphere. You have me talk thoughts on how how that uh, I'm using actually Microsoft Azure uh, IoT. Uh, and uh, some components, but not not sphere. No, not not sphere. Okay. So, which means you don't see the need for the root hardware kind of security. That's no. secure boot and all that. And um, not really, because oh, uh, okay. I mean, it's uh, these things are like installed in the very remote areas. Right. It's even hard to, you know, the the technicians to get to the device. <laughs> 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 Does your hardware incorporate any uh, security policy or technology protocol? Immediately, like, uh, say, directly from the hardware, or does it have to go to your basically cloud service before that protocol can be kind of like available for the end user? 
So uh, uh, the LT device uh, is actually using MQTT, uh, you know, uh, protocol to connect uh, to the cloud. Uh, but LoRa is using the LoRa, you know, protocol stack. Okay. Any question? Uh, I was referring to Mitch earlier. Could you, instead of going to your cloud directly, could you use like an AWS Snowball, some kind of edge computing device in those remote locations to, to, to before you send the data? <laughs> Uh, you could, but uh, the problem is, uh, and I'll talk about this, uh, there, there's no infrastructure. So um, you have to send the data long distance. Uh, anyways. Yeah, right here. Uh, so uh, so basically, agriculture is very specific. You know, uh, it's like, you know, America is huge. And uh, we just don't realize how big it is. You know, it's just... Uh, you know, you can put the gateways and uh, they have like a, you know, 40 mile range or 30 mile range. And uh, that's like nothing, right? Uh, it's, uh, you would have to put like uh, thousands and thousands of them or maybe millions of them to really farms provide. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so sometimes uh, it takes like um, the customers, um, you know, to get to the device, uh, it takes them like, um, you know, three, four hours drive time, you know, so it's, uh, it's really long distances, and my customers, some of my customers are like spread out through multiple states. You know, they, they cover multiple states, so it's uh, just uh, you know, it's big, right? Um, uh, so the, also, the, there is no electricity. So to your point, uh, there would be no, you know, nothing to plug that uh, edge computer to. You know, um, so you have to go really to the internet uh, directly. Um, and then, uh, you know, to get to the internet, uh, that's also a challenge because uh, in a lot of places, there's not even like a cellular towers, you know, or there might be like, a, you know, AT&T here and Verizon there and T-Mobile, you know, over there uh, or US cellular or some uh, other, you know, carrier. So so basically, it's, uh, it's really tough to, you know, uh, you have to make the devices work with any carrier and uh, you cannot rely on, uh, on anything. And uh, if you don't have a coverage, you, you might want to use maybe like a LoRa to, you know, to get to the place uh, with the gateway where there is a coverage. Uh, so are you using a lot of micro microwave back home to get to the no. gateway? No, uh, it's um, basically sub gigahertz uh, type of frequencies. Are these devices solar powered on batteries? Both. Both. It depends on the use case. Um, yeah. So, uh, so basically, you know, the long distances uh, mean that um, uh, sometimes the device, um, you know, uh, might not see anybody for a number of months. You know, so uh, they really work. Uh, they should. They need to have. They need to have a right reliability. If uh, you know, if they break uh, all the time, they stop working, and somebody has to drive uh, four hours uh, every time. They will not be very happy. So uh, you know, you really get uh, one chance to get it right. You know, with the customer. And, uh, well, power I'm really interested in that because I mean, there's different technologies and processors that have different like power domains. Right, you have a low standby that can do certain things in other, in other modes. You can turn on different levels of processing. So, do you take advantage of these types of um, hierarchy of power? Is it give that, or it's either on or off, or is it standby? Oh, is there, there's a, uh, there are a few states uh, like okay. a deep state, yeah. uh, deep sleep states. Uh, you know, so basically uh, the device. Uh, you know, like uh, let's say if the device is transmitting on hourly intervals, it transmits maybe for you know uh, ten seconds or something, twenty seconds, and then the rest of the time it's in a deep sleep state. Here, yeah. so <laughs> and uh, sometimes you need to collect the sensor data more frequently and then send it to, like in a, as a part of the bigger batch to save the power. So uh, you know, so in those cases, uh, the device wakes up once in a while and then. Uh, Collects the data and uh, you know, and then uh, once in a while it will send it. And what, what about event driven, where it's asleep until it gets an event? Do you have to do those types of like event, stay asleep until an event hits me? Yeah, th there are also like um, uh, things like uh, um, pressure switches, for right. example. You know, they uh, they are external interrupt sources. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, so the devices uh, support that. Okay. Deep sleep scary. Now, does your product, is it purely the monitoring or does it also control? Thinking of like an irrigation system. I know that there are systems out there, I guess, that control whole irrigation systems where a farmer can sit somewhere and control all wires and 
Uh, does your package just complement that from a monitoring perspective, or do you also have the ability to control it? Uh, it's um, monitoring uh, at this point. I mean, in the future, we might add uh, controllability, <laughs> but uh, monitoring was the first thing we did. You're just a gateway. I mean, the sensors themselves are in the field. I did the wine country, I've done the oil field monitoring. Oil field tanks, you can, they wake up three times a day and monitor, and then they broadcast. You, the main problem we have is that they shut the power down on the antennas and the towers, especially when you're in Midland, Texas, out way out. They will shut the power, they'll cut it in half on the cell tower mm -hmm. to save money. So then you lose connectivity or you can't get to them. That's the main problem. I ran yeah. into it. The wine country was different because we did, the problem with the wine country was the moisture sensors themselves, do you, do you cover 100 square feet or do you cover 200 square feet? Because moisture variate, there's such a variation. So, yeah, the, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of issues with the cell towers uh, in the rural areas. So sometimes they go down and, uh, you know, for days uh, or for hours. There's not very many cell towers, so it takes a day or two to get out there. Well, that's interesting about the resolution of the things you're monitoring, right? Like it, it, can, it can vary. They can, they can vary. The state it depends on your sensor. What, yeah. what 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 you put in the field, but you don't. You're just the gateway. Uh, no, no, we are. Tele yeah, we are telemetry. We basically connect the yeah, sensors. The sensor, the sensor, the sensor, the sensor, sensor uh, turning off the. I, I've i also worked to deal with the rice farmers, which is controlling water. So the guy doesn't want to drive at six o'clock at night to go turn off this Allison aircraft engine that's pumping water into a domain there. So he. He wants to be able to set watching TV and hit a few buttons and turn off that pump. Yeah, because he's pumping. Yeah. I've seen those um, yeah. applications. Um, another um, uh, challenge is the uh, hard, uh, harsh environments, and that's really big for the device manufacturer, for hardware manufacturer. So, uh, you know, the temperature extremes can be uh, gigantic. You know, it's like uh, 50 degrees uh, between day and night, you know, and uh, it just hammers, you know, day in, day out, uh, the device and, uh, and uh, the battery. You know, it affects the battery because uh, if you have if you have a high volt, uh, high temperature, the battery basically works better. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the electronics is taking more power. You know, so uh, it's using more battery life. When the temperature is low, uh, you know, the battery becomes um, kind of constrained, but uh, you use less power. So it's like you know. And then uh, the chemical processes in the batteries, uh, they just, uh, you know, uh, it destroys the batteries. So you have to use like um, industrial military grade batteries. You know, you cannot use consumer or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, so the components deteriorate, you know, you have to have the right temperature range. So it's pretty much industrial temperature range. Um, and uh, uh, you know, the UV, the moisture that uh, basically affects the enclosures, the seals, you know, the, uh, so you have to deal with that. Uh, insects and pests, uh, you know, insects run in. So insects sometimes, uh, if the customer doesn't close the uh, cable glands uh, all the way, the, some, something curls up, you know, into the electronics, dies, and then uh, corrodes the electronics, you know. And so, um, the you know and the rod ends, so they basically chew through the cables you know so you have to put the right sort of protection for that and stuff. Um, there's a like a heavy machinery you know all the time going through like let's say orchards you know they will knock the antennas off or will knock the device to the ground so like uh, you can see the signal is really good and then it suddenly it drops and it's like ah, you know struggling to kind of, uh, uh, you know, there's also a lot of unskilled labor, so, um, you know, they're misusing the devices, uh, you know, just um, uh, sometimes uh, we get uh, the uh, warranty, you know, returns and uh, it's like we find a piece of wire, you know, on the board and uh, it's shorting something, you know, so it's, uh, you know, or it, it, they're not, uh, you know, you like uh, maybe installing upside down or something and then the water gets into the cable gland. Uh, they might uh, pull on the battery cable and just rip off the connectors. So all sorts of issues. How many returns do you get like that? 
Uh, not too many, but uh, it happens, you know. Uh, you know, and then uh, the, uh, as far as uh, I classify that as a hard environment uh, is uh, diverse uh, terrain and uh, vegetation. So, you know, um, we're basically deployed uh, all over U.S., Canada, South America, you know, in some places. Uh, and uh, it's it just geography is very different. You know, in some places you have a hilly environment, some places are very flat, so some places you have a lot of vegetation, you know, like trees around it, some uh, like corn, you know, so it's just uh, all different uh, types of, um, you know, environments and, uh, and uh, it's, you have to use a lot of tricks uh, to, you know, uh, maintain the radio connectivity, you know, uh, how you choose the antennas, you know, how you mount the antennas and things like that. There's a lot of thought. Which countries you sell? Um, so we have installations in uh, Brazil, uh, Ecuador. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, you just uh, have to deal with uh, these things, and uh, you, um, you know, you ask a lot of questions, uh, you learn, and then you iterate the product. And uh, that I would say this is a very important ramp slowly, you know, uh, speed kills uh, because uh, you know I've seen uh, if, uh, the startups from Silicon Valley that uh, they go into this field, they start producing a, a lot, you know, they get the funding, they start producing a lot of uh, equipment, uh, devices, and then those devices cannot withstand some of these uh, things and uh, become basically, you know, um, uh, trash, you know, and uh, the customers are not happy and, uh, and the, the company loses the chance to play, you know, uh, again with them. So, you know, I've seen the customer, the competition, uh, come and go, you know, and uh, it's just, uh, it's not like uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, in the startup uh, culture, tech startup, you, where you have to, you know, put out the product fast and uh, iterate, uh, you know, quickly. And, uh, you know, even if you have bugs, bugs and, uh, you know, uh, you just uh, fix them on the go, it just doesn't work like that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you, when you put out the hardware, it lives for several years and it has to work reliably. I was going to ask you, what is the lifetime of these types of devices? Is there a typical lifetime, or is there like a minimum you have to guarantee to these customers under warranty? Uh, so uh, I think uh, the, the customers uh, typically look uh, for a five year lifetime. Okay. You know, uh, basically, it, they try to get five years out of the device. So you, you find that maybe with a battery power device that they'll just replace the device and see if No, they, uh, they replace the battery. They will. Um, quick question on testing, because uh, testing all of those crazy conditions is a, often a challenge as well. Tell me about that. <laughs> you can <laughs> see the great curve. <laughs> it's with some of it's very difficult to replicate. So. Yeah, it's like uh, you pretty much have to be like a caucus, you know, try to break things and uh, try to, you know, and uh, yeah, they. Also, uh, like the cellular modems uh, or, you know, radio modems, they have a lot of dirty, you know, secrets um, mm -hmm. that you don't see until you start stressing them. You know, it's like uh, unknown messages, uh, undocumented messages coming from them. And uh, it's like, how do you react to that, right? So, so uh, seven cards from at and to T-Mobile to Verizon. Yeah. A world of difference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or if you use the MVNOs, you know, that's no, the, the whole other work. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you, uh, yeah, and uh, with like uh, LoRa, it's even hard to uh, hard to replicate some of those, um, you know, um, some of those um, uh, uh, issues, you know, like signal issues, because uh, the signal is so strong. You know, it's like you would have to go 10, 20 miles uh, to to really, you know, get something similar. And you try to put like a metal around, you know, the device, remove the antenna, and it's still strong signal. You know, so. So there's a it's a huge opportunity. Yeah, so it's like, it, everyone just wishes it would be easy, right? I mean, it's just, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just yeah. So th that's where my company comes in, and we try to make it easy, right? We take all that uh, all those issues, try to work them out, and uh, you know, and and make the product that uh, you know is uh, resilient to yeah. those issues. For sure. Are there any tests or certification labs in this area that kind of 
maybe you offload some of that. The customers are the yeah, best. That's, 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 <laughs> that's why this is so frightening. There's thousands of companies doing this. They get together collectively and actually have a lab that can standardize all that and maybe offload a lot of the burden for you guys. No, nah, it's uh, too fragmented. It's yeah. still too fragmented. But uh, I think that's the uh, key here. Yeah, uh, the labs yeah, are around certain it's, stations. So like you have to get FCC certified on the radio. So all the labs are, are very. Yeah, but that's very. I'm not more like the, the more not the certification, more of the testing. Uh, the, the but I'm saying most testing. of the good labs are very good certification. Yeah. This is yeah. to make their money. Yeah. Testing environments, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's move on because we still have some stuff. Uh, seasonal challenges. Uh, that's um, really. Um, Really uh, important to understand uh, from the business point of view because uh, you know there's a farming cycle, you know, and uh, that has uh, implications on uh, when you produce uh, products, when you design them, you know, when you introduce them into the market, when you sell them. You know, um, most of the customers I saw only once a year, and uh, that's it, right? Uh, so. And uh, the devices better work, uh, you know, because uh, they put a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, trust in, in you and, uh, you know, and uh, their performance depends, uh, you know, the yields and all that depends on uh, how well these devices work. I know your devices will make hardware very, very reliable and strong. Do you get any, any, any support calls required during the year? Yeah. yeah. I mean, company, that's uh, normal. Is average or is it so no, it's like a, um, what I'm saying is like in the springtime, summertime, uh, the you know the support uh, tickets go up um, uh, exponentially, then dro they drop down. You know, and the, like winter time, it's that quiet. You know, it's uh, crickets. Right? Well, that's why you come here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually I'm starting to get busy. <laughs> I'm starting to get busy. So, uh, you know, but uh, so basically, you know, if you, the way to deal with that, you know, inter scale globally, so uh, you cover two hemispheres, you know, then uh, basically you can kind of balance uh, things. Uh, if not that, then uh, you have to be very versatile, you know, how you hire people, the kind of skill sets they have, you know, uh, and uh, you need to plan well ahead. Uh, need to you know diversify your end markets so maybe try to cover other use cases with the same products uh, and uh you know so um yeah so it's uh, basically just um being really nimble and uh you know and uh doing things uh, automating things a lot you know uh just um you know uh trying to yeah be creative uh, with uh, with that so are your are your service contracts annual or a monthly Annual, yeah. It's like you have to average uh, through the year, you know, the usage. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's like if you provide uh, just a fixed, uh, like a monthly service for part of the year, then the rest of the year they will cancel, right? So, uh, yeah, and uh, Ag is has been uh, really underinvested uh, because of these um, issues like uh, market fragmentation. Uh, the uh, uh, the seasonality, the top product requirements, uh, and uh, you know the farmers typically don't have um, much margin, uh, so um, so they don't have a lot of money to to spend. Um, you know, and uh, it's a lot of times it's uh, feast and famine. You know, and uh, that just depends outside of their um, influence. You know, it's like weather patterns, uh, diseases, uh, government policies. You know, import export duties and things like that consumer sentiment changes. Um, so, uh, but uh, again, that's where IoT can help, them, you know, and uh, that's where you can add value and uh, to pay for the products that you produce um, by basically helping them reduce the costs, uh, improve the yields, um, improve, uh, uh, provide uh, compliance with the government uh, policies, um, uh, providing better visibility into the operations and, uh, you know, and so on. So it's uh, it's basically uh, you know you, you have to add value. So now let's uh, talk about the um, popular precision ag use cases. And uh, uh, this infographic shows some of them, not all of them, but um, uh, just uh, you know what's uh, what I've seen quite popular. So uh, 
Uh, let's start, um, you know, you, you have a, some water source, maybe a reservoir or something where you're drawing the water from, pumping the water into your irrigation system. So you want to monitor the water levels in the reservoirs. Uh, you want to monitor the pumps, you know, if they're operating or not. Uh, the, uh, you might want to meter the water, how much you're using. Uh, and then you might uh, also want to uh, monitor the, the irrigation system that it's working correctly when your controllers uh, you know set the, uh, the pressure on uh, you know then uh, you need to see the pressure or something's broken right uh, likewise if you suddenly see the loss of pressure where there should be pressure then that means something broken maybe and uh, you know uh, sometimes uh, these are big pipes right that carry a lot of water uh, so uh, if something like that breaks and it's, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere, uh, then, uh, you know, it's like in a matter of days, it's going to take out the roads and uh, your, you know, orchards and stuff. So uh, so that's where I IoT can also help to notify the, you know, the, uh, the growers that something is wrong, you know, and uh, go fix it fa fast. Uh, and then uh, like a soil moisture uh, sensors, um, basically monitoring how much uh, Water is available to the plants, uh, and uh, you know monitoring the weather um, data. So, uh, so that's uh, that's kind of a, just a highlight. Uh, there are a lot. There's a lot more. Uh, we also you don't make the actually sensors, right? No. Um, uh, we also um, have been involved in the smart city use cases, and uh, these are some uh, some uh, that we've been involved like. Uh, weather monitoring, uh, the flood detection or sanitary sewer of flow alerts, um, irrigation system monitoring in parks and so on. So uh, uh, there's actually a startup uh, in Dallas that uh, deals with uh, with these vertical sanitary sewer overflows. And uh, we have uh, worked with a city also with at and and the city of San Antonio to install the sensors over the river walk and uh, some creeks uh, to basically alert if there's a flood coming. So some uh, real life uh, photos of uh, the installations. Um, so like uh, this one is uh, in the uh, California in the uh, semi-tropic water district. Uh, so basically they're doing the water metering in their water bank. Um, so they have uh, hundreds of uh, flow meters uh, in the area. Uh, so the, uh, this is in the city of San Antonio that where they installed the, um, level sensors to measure like the, you know to detect the, the floods and stuff. Um, the uh, the beehive monitoring so basically you know and uh, this company has been um, like uh, deploying the beehives um, to South America, to North America so, and so on. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, a lot of different use cases. Just curious on the beehive. It sound like is that like a kit? They can almost say that you your stuff. You get the whole communication stuff, and they sell the whole kit of beehive with all the communications. They actually like rent the the beehives. So uh, right, but I'm saying, if, is there a business for the beehive industry where it comes with all that IoT monitoring that you needed as kind of a, a kit model, rather you have to custom go out to each one? To, to, to do individual sales, right? It's, it, it sells itself. Yeah, there, there might be. We're, you know, uh, I mean, uh, we basically, we cannot pursue every use case. So then become, we become vertical, right? right. So it's uh, our customers that uh, pursue those use cases and uh, they make the solutions, you know, and we help them make those solutions. So uh, the, um, I'll, I'll talk uh, about the wireless technologies uh, for uh, agriculture that are well suitable for agriculture. How many are you familiar with LTEM and or LoRaWAN? So, uh, yeah, so those two really are game changers in, uh, in the uh, agriculture. Uh, they just uh, fit so well because, uh, especially precision agriculture, because you're not sending a lot of data. You know, it's just uh, the sensors generate very little data. And uh, the power is uh, everything, you know, the batteries have to last a long time. Um, so, uh, you know, so basically, 
Uh, Laura, there's a, there are some companies that make the proprietary Laura, Laura implementations, and uh, they basically put their own uh, communication stack on top of Laura. Um, and uh, that's um, uh, but uh, that's the issue with the proprietary is uh, the uh, the if you buy that kind of solution, you are depending on the vendor, you know, to, for the rest of your installation life, right? So uh, if the company goes out or if there's something wrong with their products, they have, all your investment is pretty much gone. You know? So that's why uh, I like um, these uh, uh, standard uh, type of solutions. You know? So um, basically you can um, uh, replace, uh, you know, all your investment is uh, in, the, in the infrastructure can be recouped uh, if something goes wrong. Uh, several IoT, that's going to be a big thing, but uh, it's not there yet. Um, and uh, it looks like it's going to be really using the LTE modems or NB IoT modems uh, to connect directly to satellite. So it's going to be like a base station, really. You know, there's at least one company that's trying to do more as a satellite, right? Uh, there, there's some, uh, but my understanding is that it's not directly to the satellite, it's uh, to uh, some really? base station. No, it's the actual really to the satellite. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, there was two different models that they were working on, and I, I just, I just, or the other day they were talking about device directly to satellite. Before that, it was device to um, relay, relay and data. Yeah. So either way, it's a matter of can you have enough signal and and can see the satellite. So they're working on it. Yeah, and uh, I played with Swarm, and uh, you know it works well, but uh, it just was not enough satellites. Yeah, uh, the problem there. was. Yeah. Transmitted exactly yeah. this eight-minute window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot. Starlink. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. And Starlink. Starlink is going to fix that. Uh, basically, they uh, purchased the Swarm, and uh, they discontinued that technology. And uh, you know, over time, they will migrate into the uh, cellular technology to direct to the cloud uh, yeah. to the satellite. Yeah. Um, it's going to take a while, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Yeah, which uh, I think is going to be great, especially for South America, where there's really no infrastructure in a lot of places. It's all satellites. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, Laura Wan, that came out um, in uh, 2015. It's a very low power, uh, long range, and low cost uh, type of solution. And uh, it works amazingly well. Uh, so, um, you know, it's been a game changer. In the past, uh, there were like a proprietary sub gigahertz um, product, uh, protocols, and uh, they were nearly as good, uh, you know, as, uh, as Nora. Um, it's very robust and uh, works well. It's also secure, and uh, it's a stars of stars uh, topology. So uh, actually, you can add the multiple gateways, and they help uh, the uh, the overall network to work better. Um, and uh, it's a global standard. Uh, however, the radio and the firmware must support it because there are like differences in the frequencies that you use, and also the even at the application layer, the packet lengths are different. You know, depending on uh, which region you are. Working. Isn't there a LoRaWAN 2.4? Uh, there is. Uh, it's yeah. fairly new. Do you think that's promising? Or? It's promising, but uh, I think for maybe asset tracking and things like that on the on the boats, uh, you know. Uh, or in the airports and stuff, uh, and you know, but uh, like uh, for a lot of applications where you need a long range, you know, it's not going to be as good because it's 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm assuming the band. Okay, so this is I'm really ignorant on this, but I'm assuming the bandwidth of this isn't very high. It's not. No, you cannot make a phone call. With, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, like a little bit of text. <laughs> Maybe a single word. What's the, what's the typical uh, packet size? For LoRa, uh, you know, it can go as low as uh, like 11 bytes you know, of, of the actual application payload. So it's like really little. But you can do multiple. Yeah, you can do yeah, multiple. Just, yeah, it's, how many packets per minute? Um, <laughs> well, it depends on your, yeah, on your data. Right? So I think it's like, uh, you know, um, uh, it's probably like a, a few. <coughs> Uh, well, maybe with two per second or something, you know. Okay. <laughs> there, depends on the they're binary data. Data. Yeah, yeah right it's not, yeah, so like, uh, you know, it depends on the data rate, right, and the region. Uh, they have a um, different definition of data rates, um, but, uh, 
you know, like in Europe, it's 50, I think, three bytes or something, you know, for minimum number. And then it can go at like to 242 bytes or so. What's the well, well, what's the frequency? It's 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, it's well, like, it's, uh, well, there is a uh, 2.4 gigahertz variant, but uh, what I'm talking about here is uh, like 950 yes, gigahertz. In the US, yeah. there are some 450 frequencies. It just depends on what part of the country, what part of the world you're in. Yeah, so what be like. Uh, so th this is uh, what the star of stars on that network looks like. Uh, so basically, you can have multiple gateways. The same device can talk to uh, multiple gateways. Uh, the device is not registered in the inside the gateway. It's actually registered in the what is called network server, and uh, and that network server can be on the gateway. But then it's kind of limited because uh, the whole system becomes just one gateway. Uh, but uh, for really flexibility, uh, this <laughs> network server is on. Is uh, implemented on the cloud, and uh, and then uh, the gateways are just passed through. They convert from the uh, LoRa uh, protocol, a wireless protocol, into the IP traffic uh, that goes, uh, you know, to the uh, to the network server, and uh, and then uh, you know there is a lot of processing and orchestration going on at this level, and uh, goes to application. You know, the data is sent to the application. Uh, after it's being transformed. Um, so uh, we support um, either public networks or uh, we have our own. So you can bring your own network and uh, install the gateway and uh, just uh, uh, very easy to make it work. <laughs> and uh, LPEM, uh, so, the, uh, so basically that's an IoT variant of the LTE. It's a low power, uh, long range and uh, lower cost uh, version of the of the LTE, uh, so it cannot send as much data. You cannot make the phone calls. Really, I, mean, I guess you could uh, with LTE, but it's not really meant for that. It's How meant is the to... distance comparable to LTE and are they similar? It's kind of similar, uh, you know, because um, uh, it's also using a lot more power since it's a regulated spectrum. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so I, I've seen that uh, the distance is, um, you know, about the same overall. Uh, you know, it's like you get about twenty miles. Uh, but you have to rely on where the tower is put yeah, the by the carrier, whereas with LoRa LoRa WAN, you can put a tower wherever you want. Exactly, right. if you can afford it. Right. Yeah, well, that's and it depends very much on the deployment of your local carrier now. Right? Yeah, it's very. Yeah, so uh, there are pros and cons, and uh, it's just uh, that's why the customers wanted two versions, uh, so then uh, they can address both situations as well. Uh, um, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I know um, Laura is based on the shark technology. Mm -hmm. that's the same. No, it's a uh, it's a, like a sixty four QAM or something. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a very different uh, modulation. Is there a reason why? I'm curious. The circle for LTM is as big as it is. <laughs> uh, it's uh, just, uh, you know, LTM is the name of the technology. Okay, right. I just want to know if it's a wider. So body. it's encompassing, you know, basically it's encompassing all of these, right? Do you ever see any of some critical applications um, where they have to have redundancy and they have both, both networks, um, LTE and okay, well, also uh, Laura? Uh, they're starting to ask for that, but uh, it's not it's not been a real requirement. So. Maybe, maybe this is a dumb question. Uh, so that you know, you have all these priors, AT and T, T Mobile, Verizon, over now, and you know, as was said earlier, they all have like different quirks, right? Is there an interface that your system like kind of goes through to like convert to their system where you're writing? For specifically for those versions, like is there a layer of abstraction between? Uh, no, no, no. There is, but it's very thin. Like, like so, it's uh, with holes. Thin <laughs> with holes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it is, um, you know, um, also secure, but uh, the security depends on, you know, uh, depends on the protocol that you are using. So. Uh, if you are using PLS, then it is secure point of science. If not, then uh, it really depends. You know, if you have like a virtual uh, tun uh, tunnels and stuff like that. So, so it, there's a lot of um, options there, but uh, it can be secure.
and uh, it's a licensed spectrum, so it is more expensive uh, than uh, LoRa. It's also higher power than LoRa, so uh, the peak uh, currents and the, you know, uh, in the modern or higher, uh, the battery does not last as long. So there, uh, you know, like I said before, there are pros and cons, and uh, you just have to kind of um, see what uh, better fits your application. So that's, uh, I guess, um, yeah, you were asking about the, uh, the layer. So basically, um, you know, there, this is the wireless network, uh, cellular wireless network, and uh, there are different uh, vendors. Uh, we support all the vendors who are certified with AT&T, uh, Python, US Cellular, and uh, T-Mobile for PTCRB. Um, and uh, and uh, we have a secure connection point to point. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the connection is used for telemetry, for configuration. Uh, you can send basically configuration uh, remotely and to adjust the device. And then for uh, firmware over the air updates. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, basically, we have a cloud servers based on Azure, and uh, that's uh, high reliability and uh, high availability. Um, and, uh, and then we basically provide the standard HTTP REST uh, kind of uh, APIs uh, that we defined for our sensor data to the uh, cloud services um, so they can consume that data and uh, make use of that data. Uh, so it's basically like a JSON document. Uh, so now uh, I'll tell you more about the divide it's, uh, itself. Uh, so. Uh, like I said, we have uh, two versions of the device, um, you know, cellular and the lower one. But uh, as far as the sensory interfaces, uh, they're the same, uh, you know. And uh, once you know how to use one, then, uh, you know, uh, or you have a certain sensors connected, you can just replace it, uh, you know, in place and, uh, and uh, it works. Uh, so we support the soil moisture sensors, the uh, weather stations, ultrasonic, uh, flow meters, pressure, sensors, dendrometers, and, and so on. I mean, there's a, the list is a lot bigger. It's just a, kind of an example. So what is the actual protocol between the success center and your device? Is it MQTT or something else? No, it's a, it's much simpler protocols, you know. So it could be like RS-485 or uh, 420 milliamps, you know. So basically, it's either analog or digital. There's no true protocols. It's just, no, there's a protocol. There, there are some protocols. So is it wired? Is, is it all wired between sensors and gateway, or do you have uh, wireless? Yeah, yeah, we support the wired um, connections. Um, but um, yeah, they're starting to show up more sensors, like with Bluetooth or something like that. But uh, you know, so that's something. Uh, the market is always evolving, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you just have to evolve with the market. And, uh, you know, so the, the devices, they look identical, they work almost identical. It's just a different range of evidence. And, uh, you know, so they have a multiple sensory inputs, uh, so they can support uh, uh, different types of sensors at the same time. Uh, and the LTM version is uh, certified uh, for Verizon, the AT&T US cellular and the CRV. So that covers all other carriers. Um, it's, uh, we support multi-carrier SIM, so uh, basically we don't want to make assumptions um, where the device is going to be deployed because uh, in some places you get uh, one carrier, another another carrier. It's much harder to make because uh, that adds additional layer of complexity. You know? And uh, we've seen uh, between the MVNOs, uh, there's um, you know big difference. So sometimes it's like one is reliable, another one is not. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we, it's basically industrial design, you know, so everything, all the components are industrial quality, and, uh, it's a rugged outdoor enclosure. And uh, the devices, um, since uh, they're kind of generic, it, it, they're versatile in a way, what type of sensors you connect with, with what kind of interfaces. Uh, we have a um, uh, a mobile app uh, on the iOS and uh, Android. So we're basically using NFC to, to tap 
So this is actually the device. So I use the NFC to tap, uh, you know, on the cover, and then you can read the configuration. You can change the configuration, you know, on the basically uh, on site. You know. NFC or NFC. Really it's NFC. Okay. So it's very low power, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, Bluetooth is a little bit yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, another important thing about the, these kind of devices deployed in the remote spaces is that, uh, you know, how do you help the customers, right? Uh, how do you support them? Uh, it's uh, impossible to send somebody, you know, every time there is a problem, right? So, uh, so basically, we take advantage of the IoT for our own purposes. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, the device communicates. It sends uh, uh, additional uh, uh, diagnostics data, you know, uh, with, uh, with the packets, and uh, and we basically use that diagnostics data to see how the system operates. You know, uh, if there are any issues, and sometimes uh, we call, you know, customer before they notice the issue. You know, you know basically tell them, okay, the battery is about to die. You know, go change the battery. Um, so, um, so it's uh, basically uh, we have a, like a, a, a portal on the cloud uh, that uh, the customers can look in, and uh, they can uh, basically check different parameters, the battery levels, the signal levels. Uh, you know, uh, uh, see the history of the connectivity, if there are any gaps or not. Uh, they can see the raw sensor data. <laughs> you know, so it's uh, it, it provides a lot of. Uh, um, you know, help uh, for diagnosing the system level issues. So, in, in the event that something is not proper, you send alerts, but in some fashion, to let the let the customer know that this the like let's say the battery needs to be changed. Yeah, that's an S alert. Or do they have to actually look into the portal to find that to, to learn that they have a battery problem? Uh, it it it's, uh, depends on the, the parameter because, uh, you know, like a battery is really tough with these batteries that we're using, they're industrial grade, but uh, they uh, basically, um, you know, uh, uh, they uh, they have a very high, high uh, uh, temperature dependence, you know, so like uh, if, the temp if the temperature is high, the battery voltage is high, if the temperature is low, it's low, and then uh, they Basically, the device uh, sleeps mo most of the time, so it depends when you measure. Because when you load the battery, it uh, you know uh, it basically uh, drops the voltage, and uh, the more depleted it is, uh, the higher internal resistance, the more voltage it drops. Uh, so you know, uh, and th and then it depends, you know, uh, what kind of sensor you have connected. You know, some sensors use a lot of power, some sensors use little. So you know, it's um, it's really difficult to tell you know if the battery is bad or, or good uh, you have to use like ai and things like that you know to really analyze the data and that's uh, i think where things are going you know is uh, to involve the ai to and uh, to analyze uh, this diagnostic data uh, in a way that uh, it gives you some insights you know uh, about what's going on otherwise it's really difficult to tell you know you have to be uh, you know uh, so like if you are uh, using these devices day in day out, then you can tell. Okay, I, I see this kind of patterns, and they correspond to these kind of issues. But uh, uh, if you're not familiar with that, then uh, it's difficult sometimes to tell what's going on. So yeah, so it's uh, it depends really, and uh, th that's where it's going. But there is a sensor that monitors the battery. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Um, for your device, does it so for the your device does it support heart sensors? What kind of sensors? Sensors that have the heart protocol. Heart? Yeah, you mentioned that uh, it takes four twenty and uh, virus four eighty five. Now, does it also take um, some sensors? I know it's like flow meters, pressure sensors also support heart, which comes in with diagnostic details from the sensor itself. Yeah, I have not come across these kind of sensors for agriculture, so uh, not really. <laughs> so in summary, um, Precision Ag is uh, ripe for IoT disruption. It can add a lot of value and uh, help for itself and, uh, you know, in a big way. And uh, uh, there are lots of opportunities, but uh, in niche areas. Um, 
there are also lots of challenges which become a competitive advantage if you know how to solve them well. Uh, and the ecosystem play is uh, crucial in this kind of fragmented uh, market. Good, so good products solve itself. You know, if you have a great product, then um, they, uh, the customers will really uh, appreciate it. They've been uh, you know, dealing uh, for years with uh, these kind of issues and uh, they can recognize quality, you know, and they appreciate quality. And uh, the impact is at the national and global level. So uh, it's, you know, as I, I go to the grocery store and uh, I see, you know, like uh, apples from the growers that, uh, you know, are using my devices, you know, so it's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, I can see the impact, right? Uh, or, you know, we su supply the equipment to the, um, to the grower that uh, grows uh, uh, potatoes, you know, for McDonald's, right? For fries. So it's <laughs> it's uh, that kind of scale, right? I mean, it's, uh, in what? Oh, avocados. Avocados. Oh, avocados. Yeah, that's more like Mexico. <laughs> Can you explain the name of your company? Why, why did you name it? Yeah, so it's a mashup uh, of uh, different words. Um, so uh, it's basically, uh, it's a uh, sense, it's like sense, you know, sensing, input, output, IO, you know, input, output, so sensing and uh, input, output. And uh, Zen, uh, Z is like a Zen, you know, I do yoga, so um, I, uh, you know, I, uh, I want the devices to be thoughtful, you know, to be smart. And uh, so, and then uh, the logo is also not accidental. It's basically, Connecting these uh, little dots, like dots, they're like the devices, and uh, they're basically connected uh, to the cloud. Um, and uh, then the arrow is uh, basically input output, you know. You know so, second question is, do you have any competitor from uh, overseas? Uh, there, there are all sorts of competitors, uh, you know, and uh, it's just uh, really depends on the use case and the, uh, the geography and, uh, you know, so. Um, it's um, unavoidable to have uh, competitors, um, and uh, it's very complex market. So, so are you located in Tutu? Uh, in McKinney. McKinney. How big are you guys? Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, like I said before, it's uh, basically because of the seasonalities, you have to be flexible. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, it's, it varies, uh, but uh, on average, it's less than 10. Any other burning questions that would be beneficial to the group? Do you feel that you have the best customers in the world? Farmers are the best. I, I like them, you know, uh, and uh, I'm not uh, dealing directly with uh, end customers, you know, with the farmers, uh, but uh, more like uh, companies that uh, are providing services uh, to to the farmers and growers. Uh, but uh, it's uh, there's something nice uh, working with that population uh it's uh, you know people are true to kind of uh, down to earth you know and uh, they're people. very honest and uh they uh, you know they're um they look uh, for honesty and uh, for quality so it's uh you know and uh, that's how i like to work so, so what what kind of companies do you go through to them so, so those companies are dealers, are yeah. so the, the dealers distributors and other uh, you know other sensor manufacturers, uh, you know, the uh, agronomists, uh, the, there's uh, like all sorts. There's no single cookie farm here. I mean, it's, Is uh, Arctic Spectrum doing business with agriculture? You do business with the program? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've been engaged in some projects. <laughs> the government gets involved with farm programs all the time, incentives to grow certain crop, crops, etc. Have you seen the government get involved in grants to help move this kind of thing forward? Uh, yeah, I, I've seen that, uh, although we don't deal with that again. Right. It's our right. customers right. that uh, do that. Uh, but uh, there are programs uh, where they take advantage of, uh, you know, to deploy the, the, the high tech level technology. Or at the it's, uh, at the, um, it's at the, you know, uh, either supplier. Uh, yeah, it's a supplier, it's a state level, you know. When you, when you go into an agrarian society or area, there's usually a farmer's co-op mm -hmm. and rancher's co-op. So what you do, if I were you, I go set a booth up in the co-op, because every farmer comes in there and buys his 
fertilizer. You rinse this fertilizer distribution system from them. So if you've got a booth there that says you provide this or your integrator, then you, I would go find the co-op that's servicing that area versus the tractors. Yeah, we, we work with co-ops. Yeah, yeah, co yeah, yeah, it's not an off-the-shelf consumer yeah. product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're a little more in tune to what you want. Exactly. I'm trying to serve. All right, so I, I think we're well, okay.